Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I got back what I wanted to talk about, really what's on my mind. I can't prove a darn thing, of course, but um, I ended up humbling myself in a big way just with my anger in life, you know. You know, just as far as, of course, I do not want anybody to go to hell. But I do believe there's entities that will be in that position of having to work like forever because they forever never cared. And those are more like entities <laughs> or... Um, just the position that they put themselves in from their fleshly desires won't allow them to excel. And it's a, like a contract they made with God. It's like, you know, okay, I was going to say, well, I met the Lord in Peniel, you know. But in all reality, it's a place called Noose. Actually, when you're young, he's holding your hand, so it's like a rope. But if you screw up, it's more like he was ready to choke me till he got to the depth of my heart, you know. So I had to get on here and let you know <clears throat> that um, I will keep judging in my life for me personally what I want around me. But, I mean, in all reality, I had to ask myself, or the Christ Spirit was asking me, um, not or, that's what happened. Would I really want people to have to work or be tortured all their life forever in eternity? I mean, there's certain things that I don't believe are forgivable. And those are the type of entities that need to be separated from um, human beings selling. So I have to humble myself enough to get out here and tell you that um, I did mess up in a big way. But I still feel how I feel on being judgmental. Um, I'm not the ultimate judge, but I have enough common sense on this planet where I will take that matriarchal position for the rest of the world. I will take that on my shoulders with my dignity. you darn right I will, you know. So, and like I said, I, and I've always said that, you know, whatever you're doing, you're doing I've done stupid shit. Whatever we do, we do. But are we doing it to somebody else? Is somebody else going to be affected by what we personally do? If Is it public? What's between you and God is between you and God, but what's public is a whole nother thing. And that's where I come in. I'm a warrior like that. I will forever be, and that's me. And God does know my heart. He just wanted to school me um, not to be too cruel on the average human being. And to remind you that really that isn't how my heart is, but to make that a parent, like a parent and a good friend to everybody, that that's what my heart's saying, <laughs> you know. So anyway, that's how I feel. So yeah, I had too much flipping time to think, people. <laughs> no, no, I did. I had the right amount. <laughs> In the meantime, Satan's anger tried to fry my brain out, and I'm like, "Get out of here, bitch! I'm not your, I'm not your bitch." <laughs> God takes care of me, and that's a forever thing. 
no matter how stupid I get, you know. So anyway. All glory, all glory to God, you know. And Christ is the king, and praise be the Lord, you know. So. But all glory to God. And in the end of it all, everything's going to be okay. That I do know. So I have to remind myself of that. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> <coughs> Wish me luck. I'm going to try and work it out somehow so I can find my... I've got like a couple weeks, my oldest son, a place to be and some help for where he is because he's got handicaps, you know. So maybe it be close enough where I, we can help him out a little bit. And I'm praying that Doug and Luke can be friends like they were a long time ago um, for about a year. Although it was somewhat both of them being Luke more needy and Doug in a sense too, but both sort of narcissistic, but Luke is not narcissistic. He's um became schizophrenic, which I really don't even believe is uh I think it's more yeah, it's a behavioral disorder. But the Spirit of God and Christ talk in us and we know that and that is somewhat even narcissists live within talking in their own little fantasy worlds you know it's like but don't you understand because i i believe a lot of them been so hurt they feel betrayed by god and they feel um left alone and how could he exist with so much pain, you know? Well, even in my worst times, and I try, like, when I'm really upset, when I get schooled, I, I end up analyzing, is this Satan or is this God? And um, although Satan's presence is there, God's always got a hold of me. So the ultimate, ultimate message is the Christ spirit that's from God to me um, what to do and how to act all the time and I think other people have that calling too he's calling to you you know in us whether we numb it or not or push it away or paint it away p-a-i-n it away or supplement that with all other things to keep our lives busy and still be a good human being while well, you still have God in your heart. So that's who you are, whether you name it or not, because God knows our hearts. That's the bottom line, people. You know, he knows your heart's desires. You ask him if it's a decent thing, that's going to be given to you. That's not a problem. The problem nowadays is when we do have these friendships and relationships, a lot of people don't really value those. And it could be through a lot of never being valued, you know. But that's why I like listening to, like, there. there's a... Um, Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Now, I'm still going to talk to him about the Noahide laws. But he uses different language than a lot of rabbi. And he's he's altogether a whole different type of person. And I know I can talk to him. And this is an important thing, bringing people in the world together in different ways and different cultures and that type of thing with the 
understanding that the word of God is written on our hearts and all our religions don't matter beyond that or whatever our belief or faith. See, mine is faith-based because God's never failed me. I just have to remember, I have to remember that every day. You have to remember he never fails you. You know that's true. I know it's true. So anyway, I'm not trying to be preachy at you or anything. Oh, um, Doug poked a hole in the house and brought in a air hose and then plugged it back up so he could fill up the bladder on the water pump tank. Um, it lost pressure when he was monkeying with it. So we got that up and that might be, I hope that's all the problem is. But for the pressure it is because we lost some of that. But anyway, we have another one too. We just don't want to have to, we don't want to have to pull all of the pipes out and put a sand point back down. I've done that alone. Well, with a kid helping me. I was a kid. I had just had a kid. <laughs> so, yeah, my son, my oldest, was not even a year old, about 11 months at that time. And I pounded a well with my neighbor friend <laughs> by hand. Oh, I did have some help. I When I hit some bedrock, I had to pull it back out, and the neighbor was nice enough to bring his tractor down and pull it out. The pipes, the lengths, and the couplers, I had to buy a few more of them because I brought them getting them back out. And another sand point because I hit that rock and had to go back in again. Just a little bit over. And so anyway, that was a trip. Um, yeah, and I had help my dad do things before too all my life so I knew how to do quite a bit of things but a lot of it was just being young and ambitious and out of necessity you know it's a lot better to have um even a cistern pump I have one of those too but it's better to have that than to have absolutely nothing although I lived across from a lake you know there's just right across the road. I could see um, wildlife in the water in the morning when I was having my coffee, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, we had a dock right over the the road, curved around in between. There was a set of lakes that had been connected. And, yeah, pretty cool place that burnt down when somebody tried to murder me, <laughs> you know. No, no baloney. That's true. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes, God has been with me the whole time. And, um, yeah, just keep seeking his face, people, because he is real. His spirit works on the planet in a big way. And it's all real. Yes, it's spiritual. And we see it in our mind's eye. This, and we feel it in us. You know? it's And we can communicate with each other like that. That is, um, you know, a true thing. People try. See, that's what makes liars. That's what makes me so angry if I'm gullible enough not to analyze something. But when liars, and I know they are, do things, and you know it, that's your instincts. Well, that's how I roll with God, and that saved my life the, a, a lot. Have you ever walked in a place and you just knew that if you hung around, you'd probably die? You know, little things <laughs> mean a lot, you know? Those types of things, that's a real, real instinct. That's God-given gifts inside you that people pretend that. Some people don't pretend that one so much, like they say gut feelings or whatever, but they do pretend 
that we can't hear each other think. And a lot of people um, are better at it. Maybe, maybe there is humans that are going to ascend that are more high-bred, you know. Maybe their thoughts and their actions with their spirit has given them a gift, another gift from God, another level. And the ones that can hear us think anyway and pretend they can't, that's just going to take them longer, you know. And I've accepted that, and I play games with that, but in all reality, the dangers of of um, putting an end to all that shenanigans so people do not get hurt, you know, that's the end. Um, that's the goal, you know, the end of the game. <laughs> so that's revelation, you know. I didn't, um, well, I think a great tribulation for people is actually, um, anytime God has to show you who's boss and whether you, how gracefully do you accept being taught by a parent or how gracefully don't you. And it's just like people that I'm learning from. Um, hopefully, there are more friends <clears throat> on a level about caring about other human beings, you know, and trying to find those ones that are worthy that are on that level, you know, or at least like trying, like me, trying to achieve some kind of conversation with God, you know, could I ever be that? intelligent enough to even open my mouth you know that's an important thing to me and i and that's all due respect for my forefather your father our father you know and the spirit of god that works in us that's that's a gift that's truly a gift of reading minds that's not a happenstance that's a actual gift. I just had these things on my mind that I had to tell everybody. It's like I was tripping. I went to Peniel, but it was almost a noose because Satan showed up. And God and Satan are twins. Connected, but not the same. One destroys, one doesn't. Who do you serve, you know? So, who do you love? You know that song? <laughs> what is that? Um, oh, anyway, I had another song earlier on my mind. Um, and then I started singing a song for absolutely no reason for a couple days from a long time ago. Um, and I wasn't even feeling it, you know, but it's who's crying now, who's crying now, um, let me see, who's crying now, who's crying now, something, something for breaking those vows. Oh, you took the part that once was my heart. So tell me, who's crying now? Um, it's that's not quite it though. But uh, this is a uh, oldie, oldie. This was like, I bet I was like seven years old when that was popular, or some like way back when, <laughs> you know. But anyway, I think I'll find it for you. I was going to put it out the other day, and I wanted to put it in my community because on the Barbie Weiss channel, I don't have a community yet. I applied for one, but, oh, you have to earn your rights. <laughs> 
podcast. You'll get more rights if you podcast too. And if you have, if you're like, um, just have a still photo, I have to figure out how to make it still. Or filling up the frame maybe with pictures through the whole thing. Or I don't know. if you, Well, I've seen podcasts with um, interviews and guests and different things like that. So I guess there would be different ways. I don't know why they would call it a, the difference between... Oh, I suppose because a podcast can be listened to if a person is like... Um, uh, Oh, going to work, or what do you call it? Um, oh, jeez, I should know. I used to have to do it. Well, anyway, traveling some distance. <laughs> why I don't know why that escapes me. Probably because I got that song stuck in my head then. <laughs> so, hmm. I'm just happy to be back that I didn't lose all my work, you know. Wow. Wow, there, I, I can hardly speak when it comes to the young people on this planet and the stuff they're going through. I don't know if any of you have um, grandchildren old enough to be like nearing the dating scene or past it in some extremes but just a weird stuff going on in this world yeah I suppose the last generation was tripping out too <laughs> they're probably looking at all of us like whoa I know they were me because I did not give them a choice. You know. I was goth in the weirdest way because I would combine it with Christianity. So, and then I saw that a lot after I started doing it. Like wearing silver crosses and I had silver hoop earrings. Smaller ones, not really big, but you know, and darker clothes, but it was usually like jeans and jean jacket and black lipstick. And <laughs> so, yeah, I had my big black eyes. And I had my moments with God in my heart waiting for somebody to try and mess with me because I lived in a city and I was alone a lot of times, so. I had to do what I had to do. I did change my look somewhat, though. And then I started old enough to hang around, um, like, the shops downtown. And we had skylights I could walk through um, to different places. So if it was raining out or cold, I could still keep active in the city, you know. And then I got old enough to go to like First Avenue and Goofies. And yeah, I saw Prince before anybody knew. I saw him when he was a little kid at a store that I ended up working at too. But he went to the same elementary school my adopted dad did in Minneapolis. And the same church that my adopted mom went to when she was a kid. His family did. So in a kind of a close neighborhood, you know. So, yeah, I knew him even before that. But, yeah. Yeah, a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, when I seen him playing at First Avenue, um, there was like, this is no baloney, like 10 people in the place. And I actually got bored and went across the street to dance. And that's, he threw himself on the ground and started playing guitar. I'm out of here. And I did. <laughs> I booked, you know. I had things to do. I wanted to have fun. And over there, I could actually, um, like, play pool or whatever and win, like, a bottle of whiskey or $10 or whatever, you know, different. It was more fun at that time in my life. 
I started going in there before I was of age, but I was of age that like that night in when I'm talking about, but before that I had been in there a couple times. We'd go upstairs and dance and kind of lay low because we weren't of age yet, you know. So. I wouldn't even go. I might go in for a stab, but I wouldn't go in goofies again. You couldn't pay me to get in that place. But, yeah, what you do when you're 17 and 18 is a lot different than what you do when you're 65. <laughs> you know, even by 34. Um, no, actually 23. When I had my kids, I had no desire to go in in nightclubs or anything, you know, but I used to, I used to go to these, like one was SOS and a standing or no, it was SOS. No, it was SRS, SRO, standing room only. And another one was called launching pad. Then I worked at a place called Rum River Inn playing music. And um, another place I worked at was a municipal and um, off sale as a bartender. And I had a step. Um, through marriage, a stepmother that had a place that I would help her with, too, called, uh, what was that place? <laughs> Shit. And then I can't remember. Maybe I'm not supposed to. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. That could be some, even I, yeah, some, some down days in my life. Some good and some not so good. She was a wonderful woman. I loved her. She would turn on, she she was cool. She would turn on Mac the Knife. The shark has slick teeth, babe. And he shows his pearly whites. I can't do it. Like, she is so cool. She said she had this one three-piece yellow, light yellow um, uh, skirt suit. I have a, a light pink one, sort of like that. But... And with a white shirt and just, a, she was just a cool lady. <laughs> and she put that music on and sit there and, you know, but she, Duffy's Tavern, um, owned, she owned the place and she didn't take any guff from anybody. And she was really cool. Loved her to death. Yeah, I think somebody did kill her, come to think of it. And she had a yellow Cadillac with a white top. And I get to take that when I go and get some booze for the place. So, and do some other errands. And, ah, I loved it. That was so fun. I didn't really bartend there. I, I once in a while, but I cleaned the place upstairs and lived in the penthouse. I had my own apartments up there. And so, yeah, that was nice. I had a couple places like that for an uh, antique dealer I worked with, um, she had apartments above my work, but then I was, um, buying a house from her that was haunted, and then everything, like, in life started falling apart. We lived where the oil field was, and first the wood in industry went down. This was, um, early 80s, and then the oil fields stop drilling just kind of like today the same types of shenanigans that were going on back then and I ended up having to get a, a brand new baby get a job in the night cleaning a big um oh I had a it was a big um hotel with um indoor pool outdoor pool dance floor convention areas it was just a beautiful place you know and I worked there there at night cleaning and I loved it I'd like be polishing the dance floor and it had a a disco ball but the dance floor was round and it was all inlaid wood 
in like long um, uh, triangles that made it look like petals and there was like round things inside round things all really geometrical it was so beautiful and when I'd polish it I was so proud you know take my shoes off slide across it yep we got this going on <laughs> really and then I'd head upstairs and clean the offices and convention center and loved it yeah for a while <laughs> you know, then I had, uh, then I moved back to Minnesota. It was right after that. Um, I had just got through remodeling my lake place and it burnt to the ground. I got my kid out though. That's the, a white German shepherd started barking and he saved our lives. Otherwise somebody wanted Luke and I dead. So, and so when I say I, you know, like when I'm still keeping active and still practicing my martial arts and all these things that I know to be real, you still have to use your instincts and you can't be foolish about things, you know, because this is a dangerous world we live in and there are psychopaths out there, you know, and that's a real thing, you know. And with those, you really can't wonder what happened to them when they were babies. You can't even take it that far because they're dangerous. Only God and Satan can deal with them ones, you know, so. Until the last day, and then I understand that there's a bunch, a great, great army, legions of angels, good ones that our, their energy is going to clear this nasty planet up and that'll be a day for humankind, you know. That's my wish for the future of the world. <laughs> I just want everybody to be nice. Just be nice. Is that so difficult? I mean, even if you're having a crabby day and you're a little bit mean, you can fix it. But there's no reason everybody just can't be pretty nice, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, be mean for a second. I'll be mean back and then we'll get back to being how we're meant to be, right? So. Anyway. Well. I'm going to leave this here. I really am happy to be back. And um, thank you for joining me. I am humbly yours. Hope I do a service for you as far as just being a friend and loving everybody. So peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. Have a good night or day wherever you're at.